the diffusion of water across a membrane is of course called osmosis. We'll look at animal cells to start with. Here in these beakers are some giant animal cells shown in a sort of fuzzy black. On the left the cell is swelling and then bursting. On in the middle the cell is holding its own as we would say. And on the right the cell is shrinking. Uh, the question is, relative to the cell, what are these solutions? Well, the solution on the left is called hypotonic to the cell, which means it has fewer or less dissolved solutes. The result is the water is going to move from the region where it's at high concentration, where there are fewer solutes, i.e. outside the cell, into the cell. It rushes into the cell, which has a higher concentration of dissolved solutes or substances. The cell, of course, swells and bursts. A cell in isotonic solution is in a solution whose solute concentration is comparable to that in the cytoplasm, and so there will be no net movement of water into or out of the cell, and so the cell will remain in its normal shape. This is a hypertonic solution in the beaker, which means the solution has a much higher salt concentration than the cytoplasm of the cell, and so the reverse of what happens in a hypertonic solution will take place. Water will attempt to leave the cell in a hopeless attempt to dilute the solute concentration in the beaker or outside the cell. And so water is lost and the cell shrinks, shrivels, and of course dies. In fact, the cells burst and die in hypertonic solutions, and animal cells shrivel and die in hypertonic solutions. Here are some coping mechanisms that cells have to deal with osmotic swelling of the sort we saw before on the left side of the last slide. Animal cells can expel ions through membrane proteins that facilitate their discharge. Plant cells, of course, have a cell wall, which prevents the cell from swelling beyond a certain point. And many protozoa, that is, single-celled organisms that live in lakes and streams, actually have little contractile vacuoles that will discharge water that would otherwise continue to accumulate and cause the cell to burst. The implication of all of these observations is what exactly? Uh, that cells usually live in hypotonic environments? That do they usually live in hypertonic environments? Living in an environment, by the way, includes if it's a cell inside your body, what is the blood or the body fluids uh, relative to the cytoplasm of the cells that these fluids surround? Could the cells be living in an isotonic environment most of the time, but occasionally experience hypotonic environments? Is it that cells live in isotonic environments most of the time, but occasionally experience hypertonic, it should say, hypertonic environments? Well, the answer here is that cells generally live and must live in an isotonic environment so that they are not threatened with swelling or shrinking. The implication that cells have mechanisms to cope with osmotic swelling implies, however, that from time to time, or in some cells, much of the time, cells experience hypotonic environments, that is to say environments in which dissolved solutes are at lower concentration than they are inside the cell.